the center of Mexico City, the capital of present-day Mexico. It's a busy place with lots of traffic and people bustling about. I'm here to tell you about the Aztecs and what amazing people they were. Around 500 years ago, while Tudor kings and queens ruled England, the Aztecs had a great empire that covered this part of Central America. It was an empire that no one in Europe knew anything about, because no one from Europe had ever seen it. But who were the Aztecs and how did they live? What happened to them? And what did they leave behind? Here's Mexico's National Palace. It's old, but it's not Aztec. Here's the Metropolitan Cathedral. It's old, but it's not Aztec either. In fact, there's not much you can see in modern Mexico that dates back to Aztec times, unless you look very carefully. Near the city centre, this hole in the ground is where archaeologists found the remains of some Aztec buildings under the modern streets. Work started here back in 1978, when workmen came across some large stones buried in the ground. When the archaeologists moved in and started excavating the site, they found the most amazing things. They found this series of stone steps which seemed to lead nowhere. You've got to imagine that these buildings have been sliced off, level with the modern city streets. What we're seeing here are just the bottom few metres of something much higher. The archaeologists worked out that what had stood here was a great Aztec temple, built about 700 years ago. They called it the Templo Mayor, the Great Temple. They also worked out that the Aztecs had built bigger temples over the top of the previous ones, layer by layer. That explains all the different steps they found in the excavation. Around the Templo Mayor, there was evidence of many more grand buildings. In fact, a whole city built on an island in the middle of a lake. That ancient island city and most of the lake is now covered by present-day Mexico City. Around the walls of the ancient temple buildings, the archaeologists also found some strange carvings. A giant snake. The head of an eagle. They found this statue of a stone figure holding a stone bowl. And they found this wall of skulls. Then as recently as 1994, they found this giant clay figure dressed as a bird with wings, claws, feathers and a beaked bird mask. They also found this human skull with two stone knives stuck in it. But what were these things used for? Who made this giant statue? What kind of people were they? And where did they come from? Nobody's quite sure where the Aztecs came from, but according to Aztec legend, their story started nearly a thousand years ago in the remote, dry north of the country, in a place called Atzlan, home of the Mexica people. The Mexica set off on a long journey to find a better place to live. The journey took many years as the Mexica moved from place to place, having many adventures and struggles with other tribes. Eventually they came to a wide wooded valley surrounded by hills and volcanoes. At its centre was a great lake, Lake Texcoco. And when the Mexica arrived here, it was just what they were looking for, because the lake was rich in bird life and fish. 
So, around the year 1300, the Mexica settled on an island in the middle of Lake Texcoco and called the place Tenochtitlan, the place of Tenoch, their leader. They started cultivating the land. They grew crops for food and reared animals. In the years that followed, the Mexica built a great city on the island in the lake, surrounded by water and reached by bridges, causeways or boat. It was home to a quarter of a million people. Over the years, the Mexica became more and more powerful and began to expand their empire beyond the shores of the lake. They were warlike people and defeated other tribes in battle. And when they defeated other tribes, they demanded payment in the form of useful and valuable things, or else they'd be back. These payments were called tributes, and they poured in. The city of Tenochtitlan had a thriving market, where goods from all over the empire came to be traded. Mexica were also skilled craftsmen and artists. By around 1450, the Mexica had become the stable and wealthy society that we now call the Aztecs. But how did people live in Aztec times? Many ordinary Aztecs lived on the edge of the island city or in the surrounding countryside, living off the land. This is what an Aztec home on the hills around Tenochtitlan might have looked like. A simple Aztec house had a thatched roof with a few simple things inside, like a matting bed. On their plot of land, they grew food, like maize. It was the job of father and son to harvest the maize cobs. It was the job of the women to grind the maize into a paste between two stones. Maize corn was an important food for the Aztecs. And the main thing they made from it were tortillas. Most Aztec food was only found in this part of the world and was unknown in Europe. Aztec girls learned how to cook from their mothers. Cactus was another very useful Aztec crop. Once the spikes were scraped off, the green, fleshy part was nice and juicy. The Aztecs also used natural herbs and flowers to make medicines and tonics. This is an Aztec steam house. The steam from the herbal liquid soothed the body and cured diseases. 
The way the Aztecs led their lives was exactly spelled out. Just as girls learned to do things from their mothers, boys were trained by their fathers to be warriors when they grew up. In Aztec society, warriors were important. This is a jaguar warrior with a shield decorated with turtle shells and feathers. He has a jaguar headdress and for a weapon, a wooden club studded with razor sharp stones. This is an eagle warrior, the top rank with eagle feathers and an eagle headdress. So that explains this giant statue found at the Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan. It's an eagle warrior. You can see its eagle wings, its eagle claws, its eagle feathers and its eagle mask to frighten the enemy. Aztec warriors fought nearby tribes, captured enemy warriors and won tribute payments. The more a warrior captured, the more important he became. This is Malinalco, another Aztec temple high in the hills south of Mexico City. This was a very special place for warriors. This hilltop temple was a center for training Aztec warriors. Everything here was carved out of the natural rock, bit by bit, using stone tools. This whole flight of stairs was carved out of the mountainside. At each side of the steps is a carved statue of a jaguar. This one's lost its head. In Aztec times, over 500 years ago, men would climb these steps to the ritual center at the top to become warriors. And this is the entrance to the inner sanctuary. In this inner temple dug into the hillside, a special ceremony took place round a carved stone eagle. The priest called on the gods to bless the new warrior in the Aztec language, Nahuatl. The novice warrior cut himself with a stone knife to give his own blood as a gift to the gods. Finally, he was given his own shield and weapon. He was now a warrior, ready to die in battle. Priests were important too. They knew all about Aztec gods and Aztec history, and they kept their beliefs and traditions alive. Their beliefs and traditions go back to when the Aztec world began. According to Aztec myth, their gods gathered in darkness because there was no sun. They discussed who should enter the flames to become the sun, but only one had the courage to step forward. So the sun rose and the world began. To make sure the sun rose each day, the Aztecs continued to make sacrifices to their god, Huitzilopochtli human sacrifices on the top of pyramids like this one. The victims climbed to the top of the temple stairs as if they were climbing to the top of a mountain.
The victims were often warriors captured from other tribes who thought it was an honor to die this way because they'd go to a better world. At the top, priests held them down on this sacrificial stone and then cut out their heart with a sharp knife. To the Aztecs, the human heart was the driving force of life. Give it to the gods and the world would go on forever. <laughs> This explains some of the things the archaeologists found in the Templo Mayor excavations. This knife was used to cut open someone's chest to get their heart out. The statue with the stone bowl is where the still beating heart was placed as a gift to the gods. And this wall of stone skulls is where there used to be a wall of real skulls of people who'd been sacrificed. The Aztecs believed that this sacrifice of blood kept the gods happy and made sure that the sun rose each day. To the Aztecs, death was a natural part of the cycle of life, just like the rising and setting of the sun. We think these human sacrifices are dreadful, but they made perfect sense to the Aztecs. The Aztecs also used music and dance in their ceremonies to relive great moments in their history and to communicate with their gods. Gods that ruled every part of their lives. The Aztecs were an amazing civilization. It's easy to forget that they were around as recently as the 16th century, the same time that Henry VIII was on the throne in England. But compared with what people had in Europe at that time, there were lots of things the Aztecs didn't have. They had no writing, no coins, no wheel, and no metal tools. The Aztec people followed strict rules and didn't question things, and they had some strange beliefs that we find difficult to understand. They were also cut off from the rest of the world, almost living in a different age. But something would soon happen to change all that.